to you have to continuously learn and, and grow with your team. That's true. Um, and be aware of the different things. That's why I, I me personally, I don't believe in just like a professional relationship. Right. Like I believe right. that you have to know people on a personal level. Yeah. Especially when you have a high performing and high um expectations, you know, as a leader and as a team, as a right. company, whatever, right? Right. right. Because right. how are you gonna be able to again cater to them if you don't even know what's important to them? That's true. What's happening, people? Welcome back to Be More to Do More podcast, where we help you to become the person you need to become to do the things you're called to do, my boy. Now, nah, how, how you usually start this off? Your boy Tone. Your boy Tone in the building, and <laughs> Henry. How, oh, oh, wait, sorry. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Bro, it's so weird not being in the studio. Yeah. It's just, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Henry. Uh, oh, Alan Harden, the, the third. Don't forget the three. Bro, we jacked that all up. Yeah. It's all good. That's how JT and his day right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, man, I was looking at us like, man, we back here. Man. A little more official now. You know, it's a little, little different. Yeah, we more established. <laughs> you know we came saying? back and, you know, you know, how you, you know how you leave, you know, somewhere and you come back like more established. Right. You got this. Yeah. But hey, that's what we're going to talk about today, man. Ooh. Like, um, being a winner, man, like, it's easy or the journey of becoming a winner is tough, mm -hmm. it's difficult, but. People don't understand that when you become a winner and to maintain that position, it's a lot that you're carrying. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fears. It's a lot of uh, concerns that you're having, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I remember one episode, um, you told me that your manager put a bullseye on your back. Oh, yeah. You know, because you was the top. It was like, hey, you yeah. be looking at Henry, man. Yeah. yeah. So how, how does that feel? Uh, is I that, got, is that got, still happening? I got darts all coming around me. For right now, we're not, we're not, uh, I'm a little disappointed, you know, because <laughs> we're not number one right, right. now. And right. Uh, so I'm happy we're having this conversation today because this conversation is going to actually help me okay. um, go yeah. out and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and be a winner. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Well, to maintain your winning position, because yeah. you already won a man. Uh -oh. I mean, anyway, uh -oh. it's, just, it's, just that, it's just that people are like, they at you right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What they say, uh, heavy as the head to wear the crown? That's what they say. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah, man. So we want to get into it. Y'all got fears of, you know, losing your spot. You got fears of um, trying to maintain that spot. And you, you see that person right behind you, right on your neck, man. But we're going to talk about how to ma maintain that winning position today, man. So Yeah, I like it. Let's get into it, bro. Let's get into it, man. Cool. So first I want to start off with talking about the fears of maintaining that winning position and the effect of that mindset while in the winning position. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes, sometimes we get in a position of winning. I know my default, I'm not competitive. <laughs> <laughs> right, By ne like, I'm more cooperative. Really? Yeah, I might be a little competitive. But if I'm number one, it's like, I don't know by default, I think because I feared that I can't maintain the position, yeah. I just let go. Yeah, you know that's my default. Is it like a self sabotage type thing, or I think just it is. yeah? Mm -hmm. I so I so I just let go, man. Because for one, we deal with um, what do you call that, man? Um, not winner's remorse, but um, survivor's remorse. Survivor, no, no, yeah, survivor's remorse. That should be a new thing. Winner's remorse. <laughs> Winner's remorse. <laughs> episode, that's the episode title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remorse. <laughs> but I deal with, um, what do they call that, man? When you feel like you're not qualified to win? Uh-huh. Um, dang. Dang, I know what you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking about, man. You, you feel like, okay, I got here by a fluke. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes I might feel that way, man, because yeah. I'm like, yo, you know, I spend the most time with me, mm -hmm. so sometimes I feel like, yo, yeah. Yeah, what do they call that? You know, I used to I used to think like that though, For like real? like well, more so like not not making it and like sustaining the top, right? Right. Like I used to think that it's gonna sound kind of crazy, right? Especially like you be in the position that you're in now, mm -hmm. um, and you have hit number one. I used to be like, man, like I don't think I ever hit number one. Like, I'll, like I'll, I'll never be, like, the best person, right? Right, like, right. Like, I'll never be number one. Right, right. And right. Uh, I just, it's crazy because, like, you know, you, you kind of had it in the back of your mind in a sense, right? Like, mm -hmm. but yeah. your work right. and, like, what you project and what you say right. is different. So you end yeah. up getting the result that See, you never thought you could. 
It's kind of crazy. Talk, it's kinda crazy. Okay, it makes sense because we talk about this all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a good number two. Yeah, and this right. is and this right. is the reason exactly because my exactly. work now. Now, if you want to keep compete as far as work ethics, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, my work ethic. But when I finally get to the place where I'm reaching for, mm -hmm. now I feel like I don't deserve it for some mm -hmm. unknown reason. You know what I mean? So. You know, it, it, it's really good that we're talking about this because a lot of people are aiming to win, but what happens when you get that position? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, um, so that's my thing, man. Um, it's not something that I'm... How can I say this? It's not something that I'm not aware of. Right. So if I am, just, you know, in case you're thinking, you know, if we competing and you feel like I'm on top and I'm going to just give up... It's not gonna happen because <laughs> I'm aware of these things within myself, so I'm gonna go extra hard. You know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I just want them let them know. Let them know. Let, me, let me put you on notice right now. I gotta clear. I gotta clear that up because oh yeah, I got one. Right. Nah, bro. Nah, nah, nah. But yeah, man, that's just one of my defaults, man. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I think I think uh, you know it's, it is it is uh, it's, it's, it is interesting, right? And then being able to maintain that. That number one position because you know just I just think again you know again selfishly right, right. selfishly on this on this uh, this episode right like you know we we were number one in August dropped number two in September and then you know I can't remember where we ended it in October maybe but I think in the first quarter though right we mm -hmm. ended third overall right. right so it's like and I'm looking at you know we're looking at this next quarter mm -hmm. right um, and it's like dang. And you look at kind of results that you've that you're at, and it's right. not really, and so you start to get almost fearful, right? Of yeah, like, that's what it is. Of like, like, like I like being number one, <laughs> but man, like, how in the heck do I do it? Like, I just, you know, so that's right. the like, right. and you looking at the, you looking at some of the results is like, okay, we got to change this, we got to change that, we got to do like is these, these are the metrics. That's gonna help us get there, and it's like, mm -hmm. what do we? What behaviors do we have to drive to be able to, you know, s s uh, shift right. those results from where they're trending at mm -hmm. to get into where you need them to be at to be right. on top, right? Or to get back on top. Man, that sounds uh sounds like a lot, man. <laughs> it's a lot. A lot of pressure. <laughs> so, How does that affect your team too? Like, I mean, because I know for sure, like in leaders, like in the leadership position, like mm -hmm. you are the forefront you pr pretty much the face mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like mm -hmm. when people say oh they're number one they say oh henry them number one you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> so with all that pressure that you have to face how does how does that affect your team do they feel that pressure or do they feel it coming from you i, th I think it's i and this is why you got to make sure you hire like the right people mm -hmm. i think naturally the people that we have are winners okay right oh, and okay Okay. Um, you know, like, and so I think, you know, that coupled with them seeing the vision, understanding really every, every you know, why we do what we do. And mm -hmm. I think they, they they definitely feel it, right? But they're able to right. handle it because mm -hmm. they want to win as well. That's true. So I think, you know, just in my opinion, right? Um, my thought leadership opinion. <laughs> ah, um, come on, thought leader. <laughs> but thought I, leader. In, in all seriousness, I was just, right. it, it does make it, um, it's not as stressful for them because they get they get why. Oh, okay. You know, okay, okay. I know, man. Like, and on my end, because I, I was just thinking about it too. It's not that I'm not competitive when I'm in number one. I just had. I think it's my calling, man. I have this desire to teach everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if I become number one. It's not that I'm looking at you as a competitor now. I just let me show you how I did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you so, feel like you don't you won't teach? I, I will teach. You will teach. That's the thing. And you feel like that's gonna that hinders you? No, I don't think you? it hinder, hinders me, but my mindset shift from foot on the gas to come on, bro, let me show you how to uh, you know what I mean? Let's everybody win. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, hey, <laughs> let's hey, we we made it. <laughs> but they might not have the same intentions, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like when I'm competing, it's always me against me. Mm -hmm. So if I see you on top, I'm not going to, after I taught you what I know, mm -hmm. if I see you on top, I'm not going to say, 
I need to catch back up with them. I'm gonna say, okay, what can I do differently? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I made it to this point by doing this. Now I'm realizing it's a new season of my life. I probably have acquired more skills, even right. more skills in teaching. Right. So how can I teach my team to do what I've taught this person so mm -hmm. that we can now bypass that person? So you're saying from your team, like like you want your team, everyone on your team to kind of come along too? Yeah, my team, but not not only my team, but like competitors. Competitors too. You know, it, it, depend, it depends on who it is. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're a butthole. What, what, what are the criteria? Yeah, man, if you're a butthole, it, it depends on who you is, man, because... Some people, man, you just feel that envy, jealous, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if it's a friendly competition, now nah, let's talk about it. Hey, this is what we can do, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But if you got all those extra negative um, spirits yeah. <laughs> behind you, man, like, you know, jealous and envious and all that, man, I ain't, I ain't really trying to fool with you, man, because by all means, you would do whatever you need to do to take me out. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just talking about Period, take me out. Yeah. You know, so I ain't trying to deal with that. But, you know, if it's a friendly competition, man, I'm gonna help you. You know, I'm gonna let my guards down. Hey, let's do this together. And then, you know, if you can beat me, good. Right. Now, let me come up with something else. Right. So I'm all, I guess, is is a part of my evolution, too. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't wanna constantly win the same way. I know there's mm. multiple ways to win. You get boring, right? Yeah. Like, you win, like, you win the same way as, like, yeah. Well, you know, mm, eh. I could do that way. We know it's gonna get a result, but like, okay, because I, I think about it like this, right? Um, you take you know, and you know, I, I hate to date the, the podcast a little bit, but you know, the um, there's a there's a game against uh, the Iron Bowl with Alabama and Auburn, mm -hmm. and um, Auburn or last play of the game virtually, right? Last play of the game. Alabama throws the, um, you know, they're down, I think, by like four or something like that. I don't remember. Right, but right. They got to score a touchdown to win. Mm. So, you'll go on help, right? So, they throw the touch. I mean, throw the, it's last for the game. Auburn, and this is actually, it's kind of, it's kind of both both ways. You kind of look at it both ways, right? You got Auburn. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, all right, let me, let me, let me, get, let me get the story first and I'll come back to it. The last play of the game. Alabama has the ball. Right. They need a score mm -hmm. to be able to to, um, to win the game. Mm. They're in field goal range. Field goal won't help. Okay. Right. Quarterback gets the ball. Mm -hmm. Has all day to throw the ball. Kind of scrambles around a little bit in the pocket. Moves his way up and down. Throws the ball. Oh, that was dope. Play. Right. Mm -hmm. Receiver in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Right. Alabama wins. Right. And they go on to the you know college football playoff. Right. Right. Who they play? They beat Georgia. And now they now they you know, they're they're you know, so you know, we'll see we'll see what that what that turns out into. But like mm -hmm. the thing the thing is that um the thing is is that there's there is a there's a post game interview. Right. And in the post game interview, you know, they ask I, something along the lines of like, you know, they ask Nick Saban, Hey, how did you do that? Like how did you guys were you guys able to do that? And he tells them, believe it or not, <laughs> we actually practiced that. <laughs> really, I like, mean, it's so can, many ways to win. You can tell. You can tell they did. Yeah, like, like it was perfectly in the right. I'm like, the ball didn't go out of bounds. <laughs> right, it was right in the corner. Right. The receiver bro, knew what to do. Kind of like he kind of pushed off a little bit, you yeah. know, and just you know, but like m multiple ways to win because right. traditionally, right, right, Alabama has been a team that has you know, dominating opponents. Oh, man. And man. they haven't really, I ain't gonna say they had. To, they haven't had to win, you know, last minute because they have, right? You look back at two and, you know, Jalen Hurts, all that, just those, those, those teams. Right. Um, right. But like, not like that. Not like a last second type, type right. win, you know? Right, right. Um, and I think that's, you know, that, that's what's exciting because you can have multiple ways that you can, you know, I'm gonna beat this team multiple ways. Man, that I think that separate that separates you though. Yeah. From being good to great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you can just sit there and find multiple ways to win. You know what I mean? And it, it might take an L too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, eventually you're gonna get back because now you found another way. Yep. If another way don't work, and you because ultimately what happened is that once you win for so long using the same routine, it right. becomes a trend. Right. Everybody don't. Yep. You know, now so you you got to find another way. Yep. You know what I mean? So um, that's good stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, and you look at the, the other side of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and not to get too deep into sports, but like 
Auburn had applied pressure that whole game, mm. got into the guy's face that whole game. That last play, that last drive, they start to relax there, you know, and go into a, you know, prevent defense or whatever, like having every all all these different safeties and corners in, right? And nobody's getting pressure on the quarterback. Oh yeah. So you kind of, you know, you you've been you've been, you're up to this point, you're winning the game, mm-hmm. and you change your your style or you change your 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 tactic because it's the end of the game, man. And that doesn't work. I think. In my opinion. I think Saban might have predicted that now. Mm, what you mean? You know, he might have predicted that. I mean, because at this point, it's strategy. Oh, yeah. You yes. know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strategy. Because who's going to pressure the quarterback and play man-to-man or whatever? Hold the last second of a... You know, who's going to do that? Right. So people know that, you know, by nature, you're going to... I ain't going to say go into panic, but it's it's instinct. Mm. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to drop back in coverage and make it happen. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you practice against that. Yep. So, like, that's good coaching and, and good leadership. Yeah. Yeah. So, that leads me to the lyric of the week. Lyric! Lyric of the week, right? And whenever you're trying to maintain a winning culture, this is how I look at it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have to kind of get back to, like, what works. Mm-hmm. But still, you can, you can you know, have those different things that, you know, different nuances so that way you still have right. competitive advantage. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and the lyric of the week comes from Kevin Gates. Okay, Gates. And he Mr. says, Gates. nothing's impossible. I had a few obstacles. I go back to clocking like I never left. Mm. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And it's like, That's it. you think you break that down, right? Nothing's right. impossible, right? Like yeah. having that ability to understand that, man, I can get to number one and we can create a dynasty. Right. And you got to think about it too, right? Like how long has freaking Alabama been on top? That's true. You know, like. That's true. Like That's true. Like Georgia had that little run. They had, you know, two, three years or whatever run that, that they've been on. They went back to back state championship, national championships. But like, but think about it though, man. Like Alabama is yet again back in the, in the college football playoffs. And it's been like this since. Tebow, Tebow left college. I don't know how to feel about it, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> you know, you know, that's a little controversy, but, but... Bulldogs. Yeah, you know. But it's a great leadership lesson, though. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So You can't take away from that. 100%. Yeah. Nothing's impossible, right? Um, so understand that you can get to number one and stay number one. Right. Right? I had a few obstacles. Go back to clocking like I never lived. Right. Think about it, right? You had, I mean, I, th- I remember at the beginning of the season, I don't know how this turned into an Alabama episode, but you, know, <laughs> you, can't, you can't deny greatness, right? But, uh, <laughs> you're but, a Bama fan? I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Okay. I might be, you know, I might be. Oh, so, oh. I'm, a, I'm a fan of winners, uh, right? Yeah, like, I'm okay. a fan of winning, man. Okay. Um, I can't say the same for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, yeah, like they had a few years, and even this year, right, you look at right, Bama, and right. people were thinking that man, like, ain't hey, Saban's done. Mm-hmm. But that was the narrative, right? The first three, four weeks in the in the in the, uh, in, the um, in the season, like mm-hmm. Saban's time is up. He need to go ahead and retire. And it was so crazy because I'm thinking, like, at this point, I'm thinking they lost like two, three games. Mm-hmm. They only lost like one game. Yeah, you know, and it was against a like a top five, top ten ranked team which is another team that's in the college football playoffs. Right. Which is Texas, right? Right. right. So it's like, dang. It's spoke too soon. Yeah. 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 Right. And it's yeah, like, yeah. it's just like, dang, like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, man, like, no matter what's going on, like, mm. there's people that are just going to find a way to freaking win. So that that's a good point, man. And, and good coaching. So like, to the point of finding other ways to win, I think that, even if you're a leader with that type of perspective, mm-hmm. it it relaxes your team a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I know, I, I know some leaders who, um, going back to my Wells Fargo days, man, <laughs> I know some leaders who were so obsessed with winning mm-hmm. that they would do whatever to win and they would drive their people a hot mess. Like, you know what I mean? To the point where... Um, you know, anxiety attacks and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, um, I don't want to call her out, man, but... <laughs> I don't call her out. Know, I ain't going to call her out. But they would not, you know, they would take mental days, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. the boss is on them so much about winning and staying at number one, you know, because of their reputation. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a, a leader who 
who who doesn't have options. Mm. You know what I mean? Who doesn't have a creative capacity, you know, to win or, mm -hmm. you know, find other ways to win. Mm -hmm. And that right there alone will cause, um, what was that, low retention rate, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, a disengaged uh, staff. Yep. And, you know, cause, because that type of winning is selfish mm -hmm. winning, you know what I mean? Because you, now you're just mainly concerned about your reputation. Yep. Um, but... I'm saying all that to say to say this is that when you're winning, you always should care about the people who are producing for you. Mm, you know what I mean? 100 percent And that kind of takes me to the scripture of the day. Ooh, look at him. Oh, okay, okay. You feel right, the scripture right. of the day. Actually, you gave me the scripture, man. I feel bad because No, nah, it's you, man. It's your, your thing. He <laughs> said your thing. Your thing. All right, I'm gonna give you a lyric next time then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like this back back on reading my Bible a little more, you know, just My just, man, just, yeah, my <laughs> man sent me Proverbs, man. Hey. I'm gonna go. take off oh, just a little little hack, right? Go ahead. If you don't feel comfortable or you don't have the energy to pick up your Bible, it is okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell you how to kind of move past that. Cause you're like, man, I, I need to read, I need to read a word. Right. I don't know what to read. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I read whatever day it is. So if, the, if today is the, you know, six of the month, right? Or, you know, read the sixth chapter of Proverbs. And oh, dope. yeah, like whatever, and this Pastor, Pastor Brown taught me this. Okay. Um, whatever, if when you read that, I guarantee you that there's something mm. that you're going to read out of that is going to be like, man. That hit. It hit. That right? Hit. And so just, you know, because there's typically 30 to 31 days in a month. Right. There's 30 to 31 Proverbs. Or 31 oh, Proverbs. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right? So whatever day, just read a Proverbs a day. I like that. Proverbs a day. I did that last year. Because it's more practical. Year. It's a lot of practical. Yeah, I did Proverbs last year, man, up until my son was born. Proverbs, there's a lot of wisdom, yeah. man. Yeah. Another, another thing, right? And this is something that, and I'll... I don't know how I 100 percent feel about because I don't necessarily do this, mm -hmm. but the more I don't know, I don't know, I'm gonna just say it, but we don't get so caught up in trying to read the King James version mm -hmm. or the New King James version, mm -hmm. like that you kind of because like you go, oh, I want it, I want it raw, like I want it, you know, I want it what you know, <laughs> not you know, so I want it how it's intended, right? Right. And I think 100 percent you should read those, mm -hmm. you should go back to those original kind of versions, but like right. Right. Read, uh, I don't know, I mean, you the, the reverend, so, you know, whatever easier version it is like that can, you can understand it right. in today's time, you know what I'm saying? I think that's also important to know, too, is like, don't try to read, don't try to go in there and, and be like, you know, that art and what, you know, like it just, it, it, it goes to a confusion. You're going to get sleepy, man. Yeah, you're going to get sleepy, so read something <laughs> that like, read a different version of it. I agree. I I know, I would say that I would have said that to my younger self. Right. You know, when I first got saved, and I don't even know if that's when I first got, I probably got saved young, man. But when I finally, like, committed myself to the Lord, my dad had me reading King James. <laughs> because the 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 minister we, we was under, the church we was going to, mm -hmm. was strictly King James Version. Mm -hmm. So I would have King James and my um, Strong Concordance, mm -hmm. the book that I showed you with the Hebrew and Greek. And that's how I had to learn, man. Mm -hmm. You know, but now we got all these tools and, yeah. and different versions, man. But today I'm going to read New King James, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do Proverbs 27. We're going to start at 23. And the word says, be diligent to know the state of your flocks mm -hmm. and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever. Mm-hmm nor does a crown endure to all generations. Let me read that again. Be, dil be diligent to know the state of your flocks mm. and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. See, mm. when it comes to a winning culture or maintaining a win winning culture, you have to know the state of mind of your, 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 your flock. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the state of mind of your team, of your staff, you don't want to push them so hard. That's, it's good to push them, push them past their limits. Mm -hmm. But you're doing this selfish, selflessless. Right. Is that a word? Selflessly, yeah. Selfless, yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Push them past their limits. Let them see their potential. 
but don't push them so much and so far for your selfish gain mm -hmm. or your reputation where their health or you know what I mean? The state of their family because of the job is began to diminish because of your selfish ambition. Yep. You know what I mean? You have to know the state of your flock because again, it says riches is not forever. Winning is not forever. You know, um, having a crown is not forever. You know what I mean? You can't be on top yep. forever. But by my definition, what makes you a winner are creating winners, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yep. And that leads to legacy leadership. Yep. If you get out of the business or if you leave your career or if you retire and you have people who are under you who's winning, that makes you an ultimate winner to me, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, that's 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 just how I feel about that. No, I agree, I agree, man. Uh, and uh, again, just, you know, real life, right? Like. Mm -hmm. I, I think you know when you when you're when you're leading a team, man. You have to be able to understand what's important for them and be able to right. understand and stay because like things change. Mm -hmm. Like somebody somebody may <clears throat> they may be you know mobile. They may be able to move anywhere, right? They may be able to do anything, right? <clears throat> but then something happens in their personal life that mm -hmm. changes that. And now they're tethered to a certain. So now the the way that they look at it, uh, the way they look at success is different. It's different, right? So now you have to be able to t to you know uh, you know communicate your message in a, in a different way than what you would normally communicate yeah. to that same person. Mm -hmm. It's like, and so you just you just have to you have to continuously learn and and grow with your team. That's true. Um, and be aware of the different thing. That's why I, I me personally I believe in like. I don't believe in just like a professional relationship. Right. Like I believe right. that you have to know people on a personal level. Yeah. Because yeah. like, especially, yeah. you know, it's just like, especially when you have a high performing and high um, expectations, you know, as a leader and as a team, as a right. company, whatever, right? Right. right. Because right. how are you going to be able to, again, cater to them if you don't even know what's important to them? That's true. That's true. That's just my particular. No, it, because that also leads to finding ways to win differently. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because again, like a season may change for an individual. Yep. But if you don't know that and you're so honed in on winning, yep. you know, you may drive that person away. And that may that may be your top performing person on your team. But it's always best to know the state of the people that you are over, man. Like I do believe that you have to know um the personal state or someone personally mm -hmm. too, you know, to, to some extent. Now I, I don't want to know, you know, when you do laundry, I don't want to know, you know right. where you go wash your car. I don't want to know all that. You know what I mean? But I do want to know who you are as a person. Right. You know what I mean? Because again, I want to know number one, what your goals and what your values are so that I can push you past your limits so that you can, not only win here, but wherever you go, win. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And plus, I need to know how you're able to add to this team as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I had. Look like you, you coming up with, you got some scriptures, man? Well, no, I, I'm, what I wanted to do was like. Why preaching today? No, nah, I wanted to look and see like what the, like what the, you know, obviously you just read it in the King James Version or the New King James Version. Uh huh. Just what's, the, what's, the, what's the most popular, like, just regular? You got the NIV? Is it NIV? NIV or the message? I can read either one. Which one is more? Which one is more like down to earth? <laughs> I say do they, do they got a, do they got a culture version? Nah. We need to write that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be more. We need to be more to do more version. <laughs> this will say know your sheep by name. Woohoo! This message. Dang, what, hold on. What, what the other one say? Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Where's your you read Neep King James version? Nah. This message. Oh, okay, so I'm saying so the original one you read is New King James, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, so that one says, "Know your sheep by name," right? And this one says, "Be diligent to know the state of your flocks." So like, you see how like like again like if you're if you're picking up your Bible for the first time in six months, three whatever it is, mm -hmm. six years, you know, six decades, whatever it is, right? Right. Right. Like, know your sheep by name. It's just you know you can it's it's more clear on what you need to do that's true you know what i'm saying on how you can walk out and live mm -hmm. live the word and so these i don't know i just no you know. it 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 makes the principles clear too yeah you know what i mean and principles is the key because you can take principles anywhere 
principles are not confined to situations. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take principles anywhere and use them in any situation. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to know principles, precepts on precepts. Here, there, here a little, there a little. That's what the Bible says. I said, what the heck does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> precepts on precepts. Yeah, just, just, walk, walk me through that. Just knowing you know, the perception. That's, that, that's that King James Version. I'm going to walk that. You got to get that to me, the well, NIV right there. Well, just <laughs> knowing, knowing the principles. You know what uh, I mean? Like, me, I always, when I search scripture, like, my main goal is to find out what the heart and mind of the Lord is really saying to me. You know what I mean? Like, I want to get into that. Yeah. You know, I want to see, Lord, what are you saying to us? Yeah. You know? Words can only confine, find certain ideas. You right. Know? But I want to see, like, the full capacity of what he's saying yeah. when it comes to a um, specific principle. So that that's for me. No, I, no, I get it. It reminds me of... <laughs> It's gonna sound kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know if you, I don't know if you're familiar with Charleston White at all. Charleston, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, he, he a little, yeah, he a little, he a little, yeah. he a little controversial, right? Mm -hmm. But like, <laughs> and as crazy as it sounds, right? But it, it makes a little sense, right? He was like, he was like, he was like, I don't identify as a Christian. He was like, I believe that son, you know, that Jesus is the Son of God, and you know, he died for our sins and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But he was like, I don't identify myself as a Christian because. Um, you know, Christians don't, Christians only go out of word. They ain't got the spirit, mm -hmm. which he, you know, he's talking about the generation and he's talking about whatever. Right. And I right. think there's a, they there's got a, the form, but not the power. Yeah. The you yeah. know, so I think it's a yeah. form. I think he's generalizing, right. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the way he sees people that could prefer, and I get that, right. I get all that. Right. But he was like, you know, he's, like, I want the spirit. He was like, I don't, you know, I don't want the words. I want the spirit of like, I want Jesus to, you know, that he was like, and he was like, uh, he was like, he was like, <laughs> But he's a funny guy, man. The funny guy, he's like, you know, you you see, you know, Jesus tell us that we're gonna do more more miracles than he did. Right, it works. How, how many people you see walking around? How many Christians you see walking around on water? That's a whole nother. You know, that's a whole, a whole nother nother top, right? You know what I'm saying? But like, get into that though. But like, it's, but just think about it, though, right? It's like, but that's why I like what you said about, you know, you want you want to get what the word is actually saying to you, mm -hmm. and so you can go live it out and get the spirit of the word, whatever it is, right? right? right. Um, right. And it just reminded me of of something I heard him say. As controversial as my guy is, you know, so I don't know if he's my guy, but you know. that boy fool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, man. So uh, I think we pretty much got what we need to get out of that, man. So what? How can we sum this up? Um, take care of your people. That's it. That's it. Know your people. Take care of your people. If you want, if you want to, if you want to maintain number one, um, or being, what is it, maintain? Hey, winning, 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 maintain a winning culture. Mm -hmm. Winning culture. <laughs> you want to maintain a winning culture, you have to take care of your people. Mm -hmm. So all my doobies out there. Doobies. Right? Either you're again, you're in a leadership position, right? Looking to transition into leadership. I mean to let transition into entrepreneurship, right? Um, or you're already an entrepreneur, just kind of getting started, right? Whenever you have a team, mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? Like just understand, you know, and and I, my personal opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Again, you want to have a personal relationship with your people. It starts with the per it starts with your personal relationships. Mm, that's true. What's your relationship with your with your parents? What's your relationship with your siblings? What's your relationship with you know your your spouse? Right. Right. Do you treat your Do you treat your wife or treat your you know yeah Do you treat your wife or you treat your girlfriend with respect? That's true. Is she somebody that admi that admires you? That's true. You know, and before you can lead, I ain't gonna say before. I don't think there's a before and after, but I'm just saying to, in order to lead people the best. Mm -hmm. You have to practice those things at home, in my opinion. Hey, I agree, man. Also, if you ain't got a relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, do that too. Go handle that. Because uh, he's going to give you the spirit, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going back to Charleston White. He's going to give you the spirit. Go to the he church gonna... to open. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, because I'm, I'm always for that. And, and I mean, not to sound too Finish church. prayer with me. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not to sound too churchy, but, the, the, you know, he is the ultimate leader, mm -hmm. and, you know, and he he already considered or had a purpose for us before the foundation of this earth. So if you got a team, that means you've been handed a team to manage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's on you to make sure the state of the people that you're working with is cool. Yeah, it's good. You yep. know what I mean? Because you are responsible for that. But in order to know that, you have to know them. And if, in order to know them, you have to know the one who created them. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. what I, that's what I got. Yep. And it ain't, it ain't on them to know you. Don't get it twisted, right? It says, 
be diligent to know the state of your flock. Your old peoples. Right? Like, it's, it don't say the flock going to know who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, I'm telling you, bro, like, it's, it's so deep. It's so deep, man. People try to, oh, man, we would do this if they, if they would do that. Right. You know, like, we'll be here if they would do. Right. No, you got it twisted. You got the yeah. game messed up. Like, that's yeah. your responsibility to get on their accord and get them to where you are or whatever, you know, whatever it looks like. But, like, right. that's right. not, it's not on your people to get like to like no they're not no no nah. so you've been handed that uh that uh that responsibility yep so cool well i'm good man that's all i got i'm good yeah, man yeah cool cool y'all be sure to like share subscribe to this information hit the bell man hit the bell, hit the bell man let's get this information out of here and um i think we out we out all right move we can get it done call it unity it ain't no way around it Motivation from the big guy, we don't play about him. Going hard for the gang show.